It is said that there are no limits to what you can accomplish, except the limits you place on your own thinking. With that in mind, if there is a goal that you would like to achieve but are afraid of the accompanied risks, take the chance. Make the leap and break those mental barriers. Remember, your success is determined by you. Welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Stay tuned. Energy security is a priority for both Jamaica and Mexico. We agreed, therefore, to intensify our cooperation in this area. Health, security and logistics, among others, also received equal attention in 2018. Watch the review of how the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade enabled partnerships for social development and economic growth. The Blue Mountain Coffee Festival is back and will be bigger and better this year. It is being hosted from March 1 to 3 at Newcastle. While we wait in anticipation, let's revisit last year's staging. The Blue Mountain Coffee Festival is celebrating everything coffee. Not sure if it was the caffeine, but everyone seemed to have been on a high for this festival. It was pure niceness all around. A coffee festival! Listen! Well, today my rise like the sunrise, my bright and my upright, no one can broke my vibe. I'm in a pool, who won't fight, who won't criticize, I'm on the higher heights. Tell them, see what you want to, do what you want to, it's no concern to me. And if you feel all right in the party, well, everybody just move with me. It's good, very good. Jamaican coffee culture was on display. As Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett puts it, coffee is a preferred drink and Jamaica's bean is considered the best in the world. It is part of that wider policy acting out by way of a strategy that is to bring more Jamaicans into a realization of our cultural assets and for us to consume more of our own and then secondly, to bring the world to us to enjoy and to consume at a price all of these wonderful assets that we have. It's enabling the world to come and to not just to taste the richness and the uniqueness of the Jamaican coffee strain, but it's also to show what can be done with coffee. The numerous applications of economic value that can inure from this experience and how our artisans and our farmers and our creative people can use this um, asset to create wealth and to make a better community. So the festival, yes it is about camaraderie, it's about bringing people together, yes it's about culinary delights and imbibing, but it's also about a greater economic good which will see to the enrichment of our Jamaican people. The Jamaica Defence Force Newcastle Training Base provided the location for the foreplay with coffee. There was no conflict in sight, but rather an interest by the young and mature to indulge in the bean at the country's highest peak. With the mist hovering, patrons sampled and tested all there was to offer. The beer vanilla nutmeg, it is awesome. Well, first of all, my hands feel smooth and soft and sexy, so it's really lovely. We have a coffee cake for 300. Dozens of local brands showcased the best of coffee byproducts and how the bean may be stretched to gain needed foreign exchange. We have our coffee rum cake here, so the only case is a nice decadent cake. It's, trust me, wonderful. What we are doing today is the old school style brewing method called pour over coffee. That's um, basically we are doing everything from scratch, grind here and then brew here and then serve fresh. I have to thank the Minister of Tourism for that particular insight in understanding that for the coffee farmers to do well, we have to move from just thinking about coffee as a drink 
I love it when they make it in those nice ice drinks as well. I love coffee cake. I love coffee sweetie. Lord, I do not understand. All those liquor brittles with the coffee and the peanut or the cashew. Coffee to the world. The inaugural staging of the Blue Mountain Coffee Festival has set the stage for what is expected to be an even greater event in the future. I've been waiting for something like this. We're going to market it internationally. We're going to get into the magazines and into the, um, the, 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 the digital uh, marketing uh, avenues. So we're going to utilize all the media to showcase the images of Jamaica through this festival. And it is going to be a huge marketing point for us. I am having the cappuccino with spiked with a little awesome. Bailey's rum cream. Yeah. It's a good experience and it has potential for growth and it has also potential for tourism growth as well. I'm from St. Mary and it's wonderful and it's, it's very nice to see that we've got such beauty in Jamaica and most of the time we Jamaicans, we don't know about these places. I've tried the coffee liqueur and it's wonderful so I'm going to have a get a bottle to take back with me. Amazing, it's absolutely, I've never been to the Blue Mountains before or anywhere up this high and it's gorgeous. Surprised at how many people are here and how much is here on offer, it's wonderful, it's, a, it's fabulous. We've had a great time. Coffee ice cream, great, absolutely fantastic. It has this creamy velvety taste and it was made right in front of me, right there. My candy's delight. To try, definitely, it is a something to behold. Real coffee is blending there. It's my first time here and absolutely loving it. I love the different products and everything. Well, next year, everybody, come on out. Major Road Works, New Road Traffic Act gets parliamentary approval. 2018 witnessed the unfolding of many developments for the Ministry of Transport and Mining. Sit with us on January 22 as we bring you the 2018 success stories. Three deaf students from the Edna Mandy College of the Visual and Performing Arts have danced their way into the hearts of so many, having won multiple awards in the JCDC Deaf Dance Competition Check them out. There's a sort of purposeful selection of the sequence in these human movements. The symbolic significance of hands massaging the air and feet beating to the vibrations of songs. They're focused, energized, ready, and raring to go. If you think about it, they are just like you and I. Well, of course, that's if you can dance. But one thing might be different. I've been there for 23 years and I've been dancing for 10 years. I've been deaf for 21 years, and I've been dancing for 14 years. So I've been hard of hearing ever since I was born, until now, and I've been dancing for 16 years. Yes, persons like Christoph, Kimberly, and Demani dance. And despite nature's act of removing a seemingly valuable aspect of their senses, these three are pursuing a certificate in dance at the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts, but not without some challenges. Well, my experience here at first, when the three of us just arrived, were a bit awkward in terms of communicating but then we were able to learn from each other, learning from the hearing students, and we were able to, we had issues as well with the rhythm, keeping up with the rhythm at all times, but then we were eventually able to catch up and we started to improve gradually. So for me, my main issue is timing. So I try to work along closely with the other students in the class and the teacher as well. And then eventually 
I'm able to catch up with the timing in terms of the music. So my challenge during class, it's really to ensure that my body is moving with the timing and the music. Deaf dancers do move on the beat and in one accord with the rhythm. But the surprising element in this for most persons is just how are they able to, or even why did they choose dance? I hear a little of the music and I can feel the vibration on the floor as well. So it's not that bad for me. So I use that method throughout. With his sense of touch heightened through his loss of hearing, Damani can interpret the music through the vibrations he feels. Deaf dancers are visual learners, so for them, their instructors sign the moves or the counts. While other dancers are busy remembering the details of the moves, those like Damani, Kimberly and Christoph are counting, keeping time, and watching keenly what their hearing pairs are doing so they can interpret the steps. So I chose to study dancing because dancing is my life. It's my passion ever since. So I want to learn more and more about dancing. I don't want to give up. I don't want to stop. I want to continue. Because my goal is to become a dancer in the future. So when I'm finished at Enamani College, I want to become a dancer and I want to perform around the world. So my goal is to become a dance teacher so that I can empower younger deaf children who really love dancing and empower them so that they can, you know, be as good as I am. It's their turn. But for acting dean at the School of Dance, being deaf is not the biggest obstacle for becoming a great dancer. I don't want to describe what we have as challenges. I want to describe them as opportunities to learn. What fundamental to dance is the ability to demonstrate and for the dancer to use their eyes and observe and learn the experience in a visual way and then demonstrate what it is that they have been taught. I think one of the interesting things about the deaf students is that their other senses are heightened and so they can, they're able to access the information in other ways um, and quite differently from the hearing students. So it's very interesting to see the learning dynamics, but the end result and the objective or the learning outcome of the experience are still achieved. And we're very happy about that because ultimately we want them to succeed. And while for the school it is the first time opening its gates to persons like Christoph, Kimberly and Demani to study dance. They're eager to receive the information and we're inspired by this drive to learn and to succeed. So even though we have an interpreter, the interpreter is also learning from the experience because we have interpreters who have never been in a school environment like this where dance is concerned. So they're also learning new language. It somehow feels as though they've brought more to us. For many of the deaf community, the fear of fitting in lingers. But for Christoph, Kimberly and Damani, dancing is passion driven and determination ruled. Well, I hope that what we've done here at the Edna Manley College in terms of opening our doors to three deaf students will encourage others and inspire them to go after their dreams. So I remember in high school, there was a quote that says, I believe I can achieve. I go by that. So in the Bible, it talks about I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I believe I can achieve. The national ID will protect your identity. In these modern times, we all need protection from fraud and identity theft. We're moving Jamaica into the modern era where your privacy is top priority. 
your fingerprint and your picture will secure your ID. This is no different from when you apply for a visa or a passport. Get the facts at nidsfacts.com. NIDS is here for your protection. Jamaicans have been making outstanding contributions over the years in many areas. At the 2018 staging of the National Medal for Science and Technology Innovation Awards, Joy Spence, the world's first woman master blender, was awarded the National Medal for Science and Technology. She won from a field of nominees which included Dr. Lawrence Williams, a University of Technology lecturer and researcher. Advancements in science and technology are facilitating an enabling environment for innovation and creativity. This in an effort to promote individual and national growth. We celebrate the men and women at the forefront of these processes through the National Medal for Science, Technology and Innovation. I always believe in that. Only the best is good. Science is important because, let's say we diseases, for example, you need to treat diseases and you need to find natural products which can make people healthy and we can develop medicine for, for export and also bring re economic rewards and that the country can be much better in terms of health and finances. I went to Germany and to Alexander von Humboldt Research Fellowship. This was where major, the major anti-cancer work was done with Professor Rosen and Professor Cross. This work will be very significant work on the DTS as a compound we isolate from Guinea and wheat as an anti-cancer agent. The contribution that I've made is the dibenzyl trisulfide, the DTS. We have now made a tonic wine of that product and, and we have put it on the market and we are now in the position to do a clinical trial on a pure DTS that is isolated from the plant and some companies have synthesized it. So the work has got the attention of international scientists. The DTS has potential in treating cancer. It is doing very well in hospital. They inject it directly into tumors and then these tumors perish or dies out and I think um, scientists are now looking at the work I think that um, Jamaica stands to benefit from this. I've, I've worked on about 300 Jamaican plants and the guinea hen is just one of them and at Utec here we start to do some good research in natural products. I think um, the findings that we get from, from these plant extracts is what keeps us going. I think the legacy that I want to leave behind is the fact that a Jamaican woman was able to break the glass ceiling in the spirits world and become the first female master blender globally. I actually joined the company as the chief chemist and became so fascinated with the art of blending and how you can combine so many different rums to create these complex flavors. And that rum can be so sophisticated, smooth and beautiful on the taste. And this is where the romance started and I love rum day by day by day. 2017 was a phenomenal year for me. So many things happened. I was able to release the Appleton Estate Joy Anniversary Blend and I was able to use my very special rums that I have put aside over the years to create this blend. I was also awarded um, national honors by the government, a command of distinction. Most importantly, the tour was actually named the Appleton Estate, Joy Spence Appleton Estate Rum Experience, which till this day gives me goosebumps whenever I come here. And finally, the, my rum actually received the Rum of the Year Award for 2017. I think I've been able to elevate Jamaica premium age rum globally by introducing new analytical methods, sensory analysis, process improvements, and special projects for um, rums in Jamaica. Introducing the process to stabilize our age rums is the most important project for me because you have compounds that are created during aging which actually precipitate in very cold temperatures after bottling. 
It doesn't look very attractive to the consumer. And that's how I was able to introduce a process of chill filtration and carbon treatment to stabilize the rums for better appeal to the consumer. Jamaica rum is known for its consistent quality and flavor. And so internationally, persons who bottle rums feel that if they put the word Jamaica rum on the label, consumers will gravitate towards it because it is known for its excellent quality. I spearheaded the technical committee for the Jamaica Rum GI, so I helped to develop the code of practice and the specifications for Jamaica Rum GI. And this is a very important achievement for Jamaica Rum because we're now able to speak with one voice and protect Jamaica Rum globally. And that is very important because it acts as a gateway for our tourists globally. And so we have been able to not only promote our product, but also the passion and spirit of our people internationally. There is nothing that we do that doesn't involve science and technology. It goes beyond publishing research papers to finding solutions, creating new products and services that change lives and shape our existence. The love and dedication of these stellar individuals has shown that with the application of science and technology, Jamaica is making its mark globally. Cardiac arrest, sudden loss of blood flow resulting from the failure of the heart to effectively pump. Find out more next. You're up and about going through your routine activities. Suddenly you collapse without warning. Your heart stops beating and within seconds, you stop breathing. A quick check shows there's no pulse. All signs of sudden cardiac arrest. Sudden cardiac arrest, SCA, is a condition in which the heart unexpectedly stops beating. When this happens, blood stops flowing to the brain and other vital organs. The person may die if not treated within minutes. So the way you decide if, there's, if they're having sudden cardiac arrest is in addition to seeing if they're conscious, calling to them and seeing if there's any response, you need to feel for a pulse. So you'd feel at the neck, at the angle of the jaw, or you could lis you know, listen for the heartbeat by putting your ear to the patient's chest. You need to see if they're breathing. So if they are not breathing, they have no pulse, then they're in cardiac arrest. SCA is not to be confused with a heart attack, which happens when blood flow to the heart is blocked. However, a heart attack can lead to sudden cardiac arrest. Another way to look at it is, a heart attack is a circulation problem, while sudden cardiac arrest is an electrical one. The immediate cause of most SCAs is an abnormal heart rhythm as the electrical activities of the heart becomes chaotic and the heart is unable to pump blood to the rest of the body. We're all at risk for sudden cardiac death, so we need to know our numbers and our status. What is your blood pressure? Do you know what your blood pressure is? Do you know what your cholesterol is? So we might be a walking time bomb and we don't know. It's not just people who appear healthy who are at risk. Somebody can be overweight and you say, oh, they're bound to drop down, but somebody who is slim can drop down as well. It just depends what the other risk factors are. So I just think the only way we can know is to know your numbers, know your status. Among the conditions that trigger sudden cardiac arrest is coronary artery disease, a more common cause in persons over 35 years old. Also, cardiomyopathy, in which the heart muscle becomes enlarged or thick and weak, as well as inherited disorders that may cause parts of the heart to stretch and become weak. Other conditions include disorders of the heart's electrical system, as well as heart defects that were exhibited at birth. Persons who have a family history of sudden cardiac arrest or heart disease are also at risk. In contrast to elderly persons, cases of SCA is not prevalent in children. But the Children can be born with some types of heart disease that make them uh, have a higher risk for sudden cardiac arrest. That is usually picked up if they have, sometimes at birth, 
because of the abnormalities. But even if they're corrected, they can still have an increased risk of sudden cardiac arrest. Highlighted cases of SCA in student athletes in recent years prompted increased focus on evaluation for the physically active. I would like to, to encourage all parents, if you have a child who is involved in any team sport, any physical activity, or even a lot of physical activity, and if they're not on a team, to please have your child checked. Carry them for sudden cardiac arrest screening. We have it at the Heart Foundation, we can come island-wide, or go to your GP and have your child tested. A victim of sudden cardiac arrest can survive with the quick action of a bystander who is able to apply immediately cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR. You will start resuscitative efforts, which would include compressing the chest in order to get the heart going. You may or may not breathe for them. Nowadays, it is not, you know, a lot of bystanders balk at starting CPR because they don't want to put their mouth on the patient's mouth. And I mean, that's a real concern. Studies were done a couple of years ago and they determined that compression only CPR, so just pressing on the chest alone, is of value. If available, an automated external defibrillator, AED, can be used within a few minutes to restore a normal rhythm to the heart. These may be available at certain places, such as airports, stadiums, and other public and business places. If someone has developed chest pain, they've grabbed their chest, they've sank to their, you know, sank down on the ground because they're having chest pain or they're not breathing properly, you don't start CPR for that. They need to get to medical attention immediately. But you would only start CPR if the patient is pulseless and not breathing. Following that bit of first intervention, which must take place within the first four to five minutes of sudden cardiac arrest, the patient will need to be moved immediately to a hospital. The Ministry of Health since 1996 has been partnering with the Ministry of Local Government through the Jamaica Fire Brigade to expand its provision of pre-hospital service. We recognize that transportation of patients to hospital is a vital part of the chain of survival. Certainly from the patient suffers an incident to the point at which they reach hospital and get care. The transportation to hospital is important and not only in terms of the time that it takes but also in terms of the support that is provided during that transport. You're supposed to have a defibrillator on the ambulance, you're supposed to have basic drugs which a trained paramedic would be able to administer to continue advanced cardiac life support and when they get to the hospital which would have been alerted from the ambulance that we're bringing in a cardiac arrest victim, the team would be waiting at the door of the hospital to receive this patient. Based on the value of CPR in saving a life, the Ministry of Health has been partnering with the Heart Foundation of Jamaica to encourage more Jamaicans to get trained in CPR. And this important life skill is everybody's business, so get trained and be ready to lend a hand when the need arises. By now you would have all heard the news about dengue cases across the island. Symptoms include severe headaches, sudden high fever, skin rash, joint pains, pains behind the eyes, fatigue and even nausea. Help the government in its fight against dengue by destroying mosquito breeding sites, cover all water catchments and empty old tires, pans and other items that can retain water. You may think it's not enough. But emptying that one bucket may be all we need to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business in good health. This is where the magazine closes for today. I do hope you found our program informative. Send your feedback to jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm. Stay informed on our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, this Twitter. Or download our app on your Apple and Android devices to catch up on the go. You can also visit our website, gis.gov.jm for more information. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.